videos, I watched a lot of a lot of videos, and you know, it was this great uh, video about uh, how this program has helped with minimizing STIs and STDs and doing sex education. And the only population that was in there were young people of color. And I was thinking, considering that I've taught both nationally and internationally in many diverse communities, that everybody, last I checked, needed sex education. Um, but for some reason, there was a spotlight on this population. And I'm thinking about, you know, not only do we have to always look at who's in these images, but who's excluded from these images, why they're excluded from these images, what narrative is created when we don't see certain images or when we do. So it is to assume that young people of color are promiscuous, is not to assume that they suffer from skin hunger because you fractured their family. That our kids go through school daily, daily, they leave home, and they don't even get a hug when they leave in the morning. It's not to assume that. It's not to assume Maslow's hierarchy of needs that you're gonna get your needs met no matter what, because that's what you need. So it's, we can't assume that either. go to a resource like this saying we need your support, we want to partner, we want to help, even though these, these very programs are still full of the same systematic racism that are going to gentrify our community. I want you to find the right person and it's going to be great. You want to tell you about your first experience. It's going to be wonderful and the mothers come together. And, and, and it's 
like, no, we don't want you to not have sex. We don't want you to not experience love. We're just saying that you can't get pregnant until you find love. That sounds like a pretty healthy message. That's positive. Us is more about prevention. Anybody heard of pregnancy prevention? Who are you preventing? <laughs> what exactly are you preventing? That's no different than this judge discussing what he wanted to do in the prison system. Again, have, have, does heaven forbid that black people find love? <coughs> heaven forbid that they make children as a product of love. We must prevent them from having sex at all costs. Even if we have to go to their fathers in prison to make sure that they're not even born. So, anybody heard of Teen Mom? <laughs> Teen said, yay! <laughs> Teen Mother's yay! It's so awesome. walking down the street, pushing the stroller by themselves. How we look at it. When we see white young teen mothers, you know, they probably got the grandparents, got the parents to help them. We just, you know, she's going to be okay. We still going to get her to college. It's okay. It's okay. Anyone know any young mothers who had children who grew up to be successful. I'm a product. Shout out to my mother over there. Thank you. My mother's first time ever hearing me speak. I can speak to so. right to boil water for their child's milk, right? And then we have examples of Flint. Yep. And I'm, I'm in Cachoeira, Brazil, and I'm going through the community looking at the city, and, and you want to talk poverty. You want to talk poverty below the favelas when I see a two-year-old child uh, have to go to the bathroom on a sidewalk with no parent around. And that's a norm. Yeah, water is a, is a woman's issue. It's a feminist issue. So we go back to gender. We go back to economics. We go back to classism. And it shoots right up to colorism. Unemployment, medical discrimination, ex expansive birth rates, HIV and STD, STI prevalence. Because more times than not, who is 
in that, if we think of all the countries, if we think of all the <coughs> islands in the world, who does not have the same challenge at this capacity? This can happen in Flint. It cannot happen in Gross Point. It will never happen in Gross Point. It will never happen here in this room. Why? <laughs> Environmental <laughs> racism. You know why. Why? A little contraceptive gentrification. You know, you know why. We do. We all have the ability now, though. Once you are informed, you are responsible. That's right. Hmm. Can you say that again? Once you are informed, you are responsible. When you go back, when you return to your desk, to your education, to your platforms, I need you to think of all, all people. And who's left out of that conversation? These ethnic groups here, as people of color, this one monolithic ideology. There are over one million Cubans here in America. There are over one million uh, individuals from the Dominican Republic. There are over 700,000 Jamaicans. There are over 600,000 Haitians. There are over 2 million indigenous Africans. There are over 200,000 Trinidadians or Bayesians. So when they talk about black people and people of color, as if all of these people from all of these diverse spaces share the same culture, ideology, experiences as black Americans, <coughs> do they have access to the same type of water, contraception, education in Haiti or Trinidad? We understand that indigenous Africans, based on the country that you are from, you know, you contract HIV for a completely different purpose, completely different reason. We're not a monolithic population, yet we are grouped as such. Because it's easier to simplify people. When I was in Brazil, I had to convince people I was American. I was like, shut up. <laughs> that was interesting. And then when I come to America, everybody just thinks you are one person. Got to mix up. Oh, you look like that girl. You look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just, just no matter what tone, no matter what accent, no matter what background. We don't even acknowledge these individuals. We don't acknowledge their trauma, the suffering that they come from, why they came over here so hard to work in the first place. What they have to do to give back to their communities and send money back to them is why they came here in the first place. And we're not acknowledging that in our work. So, a couple of questions that we can discuss now. Are we truly ready for cultural healing? Because what does it mean when black people become well? And how is everybody going to feel about it? Because that's a threat. Yeah. Will you become equal beings? institutions work within cultural and ethnic competencies to restore balance and eliminate contraceptive gentrification? Can we turn loose the condoms? Can we take the, the guard off the condom racks? Can we offer girls other forms of contraception other than a condom? Can we offer boys education for a change? Can we teach them that their, body, their bodies have as much value as girls? Because if nobody taught me to have value for my body, I certainly wouldn't care about it either, let alone care about somebody else. How are we expecting them to care 
when they have not been taught to speak for themselves. Because that communication is gentrified. That's gender gentrification. And how do we decolonize our efforts to heal and restore? So when some of you were coming in, I was I was actually playing a song uh, by Miriam Makiba of South Africa. Uh, that song was created when one of the prisoners that was held with Mandela passed away. That song was created. And for me, it's a song of healing. And I wanted every, I wanted, I want to create a healing space. So I wanted you to come in while healing was taking place. Because healing can take place every minute of every day if you want it to, if you let it. Your work can heal. But we have to be mindful. So let's, let's visit this. What, what are some of our thoughts? Now's our time. We have a little time. Now it's time for a little work. What are your thoughts when I say, are we really ready for a cultural healing? Because that means everybody's accountable. When I speak, when I educate, and I work, I have to understand that it's not work. It's supposed to be a healing process. It can't be work anymore. Work haven't done anything for us. Matter of fact, academics haven't done enough for us. Go in as activists, come out as academics. Hey! Okay. <laughs> Activism left behind. So now we're going to have to shift. You're going to have to learn to use that academics for activism. Thoughts, feedback? Are we ready for taking responsibility of our ancestors? Are we ready to forgive, to change our perceptions? We can get stuck on thinking, oh, this individual or this um, culture has um, shaped me to who I am. Okay, you can, we can change. But are we willing to do that in order to be healed? Healing takes work. It does. It's hard. It does. And if we think about, if you think about ancestrally, right, because they already showed us the path. There's no way you can put that many populations from different demographics, different languages on a boat, and somehow they managed to put those languages together and find freedom. <laughs> that's, that's pretty powerful. So all of us in here, like the speaker earlier said, we all have a different experience, so we're all speaking a different language. And yet we can still be free. It's totally okay. But it does require forgiveness, starting with ourselves. I didn't realize I was gentrifying my neighborhood. I didn't realize when I walked down the street and I saw somebody and I looked at them like, what are you doing here? Possibly to steal a condom that I couldn't steal in my neighborhood because they're locked up. So we have to consider these things. Uh, again, that is a song by uh, Um What are our other thoughts? <coughs> You guys are in, as, as much as we say we're a part of health, this is a governmental institution that we're a part of. What do we have to say? Uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time with doing cultural healing because I, for me, with the community that I work in, there's a lot of youth that have a lot of built up aggression and show example around oppression. And I'm They've been, they haven't been put in the same situations for others in past generations. So I, I don't know whether it's stemming from the past generations kind of doing what they've experienced on the new generation. They're just kind of taking that in there, kind of reliving those same, those same moments uh, going on through other generations. So I think for us kind of breaking that cycle and kind of building more unity with other cultures. Uh, cultures. I think 
mean, when was the last time we asked, right? When was the last time we said, you know, what are you so pissed about? Because the truth is, we really don't want to know because that's a whole lot, like, that's going to spill over the bucket, right? So we like, oh, it's just like you say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and you walk away because you really, if somebody really told you sometimes how they were doing, if they actually check in, you were like, oh, shit. <laughs> I did not need all of that. I got my own shit to deal with. I didn't, I didn't need that, right? But young people today, they get louder and louder because more people have tuned them out. And so if you actually took the time to listen, they do receive that. Whenever I work with kids and I, they do something crazy, I'm like, why are you going to make me strangle you? They're like, hey, Ms. Davis, you crazy. Okay, I'll be cool, right? They are looking for that touch. Yep. Every time you try and hug a young boy, he resists. It's because so much is going to flow out of him, he cannot contain it. So it's better to keep it inside. But we're not touching them. I see you and I see you. Uh, I think that's I, what you know doing. what? Wait a minute. Can I? Let's, let's play here. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure everyone, everybody test, 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 test. Oh, test. Oh, I think it's like a residual anger, like uh, it's taught in our culture, like um, what, what our ancestors have been, been through, but it goes to what you were saying about other uh, people of color, we kind of neglect what they're going through now, and then with the youth, I feel like uh, what we're going through with Black Lives Matters and, and all these things, it's like we kind of, it's kind of a doorway there, but the kids don't understand how to connect everything together to even understand like uh, where the solution is. So they just go to the residual anger that's already there and they add on to it. So that's what I feel like it is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that boy right here, you can talk it. Yeah, oh. talk. Oh. There we go. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so Technology, people. You hear me? I'm, so I'm going to piggyback off this. Um, I can agree with that, and we have to dig a bit deeper from that because not only does it include the residual, it also includes the environment, mm -hmm. uh, the teachings of the parent. And when you think about it today, you know, it's hard. You know, some people have to work 12 hours a day. Now, as you know, I grew up from the projects, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of my friends are still there, unfortunately, and their mindset, we're not the same because of where they're at. You have to put so many hours in, you don't have time to actually sit and cater to your child. And when we go back to our you know, our ancestors, the mother will work with their baby on their back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's for us to heal, not only do we have to find that within us, that, that healing factor within us, we have to go down to the basis because me growing up, my mom, life was hard. We were born in the projects, no pops. You know what I'm saying? She had to work countless hours. She didn't give me time. And then it got to the point where she couldn't even look at me because I resented, you know, my father. So, um, in a sense, when, when we look at our youth, it's not, we can't just judge them off of it. Oh, they're going to steal. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't be mad at those that are asleep. Because I hope they, don't they steal know. condoms, though. I tell you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do even condoms. though they shouldn't have to. It would be shouldn't, but, right. you know, uh, as far as the healing, we have to not only teach our youth, but we have to talk to the parents as well. Put down the phone. Don't give your child a phone. Talk to them. Yeah. Ask them how they did. You know, give them a book. Let them read. Let them color. Let them be outside. Let them be outside. You know, yeah. and, you know so that's just my So, again, that. you talked about methodology, right? Mm -hmm. Methodology now being love. You said that the mother carried, strapped on her baby and still had to carry everything. That was a method. Yeah. Right? And, and it, it was a method of love okay. and it showed a work ethic. Yeah. Right? So you were doing two things. They was like, shoot, you know, sometimes you, you're going to say, listen, you know, I need some extra, extra, extra coins mm -hmm. or I need to bring the baby to work. Yeah. And, okay. then, and then it gets to the point to where as soon as you're 18, you have to get a job and you have to pay rent, you have to get out. Versus another family, mm -hmm. you know, me and my homeboy, we were talking. If you go, you, you graduate, you get a job, 
congratulations, oh, we're going to party. Versus a white family, you get a job, you graduate, this is the norm for them. This is what you're supposed to do. This is no celebration. You're supposed to go to college. But let's go back to our history. Yep. Exactly. Right? Let's go. When we had 80% the... of marriage in our families before that, there was a fracture. So don't say that we're not used to it. We've been there. We, we started it. Like, okay, so let's look at our, our cultural history. Uh, we, we now have this uh, in, in Washington, D.C., the new Smithsonian. African American Smithsonian Museum. It's beautiful. But I got a bone to pick with them, the fact that they started with slavery. Our history started long, long, long before slavery. So who did it appease for our history to start their convenience? Right? That's the association that they steal because those government lines that went up in there wasn't just Oprah's millions, it was a lot of other institutional millions that went in there, right? So we have to reclaim the narrative, the original narrative. But then at that point, there's a, a wanting, but the generation that's now, we don't care about that. Yes, we do care. No, so the new show generation. Show your hands if you care. The, the new generation is fine. Let's care. Now that's, now that's, we're talking about, but okay, so I'm going based the on the The only way that they know, because there's an extension of them, mm -hmm. and there's an extension of them, 